saw like a vine borer was bad. <laughs> At least the plant can still grow with a vine borer attached. Hey friends, welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading ESK Garden. This week I'm going to be sharing a little bit of a kind of a week in the garden and just walking you guys through the days and what I get done on each day. Um, now it has been really, really hot here. So my normal regimen um, looks something like what I'm going to be showing you when it's not so hot that it's, you know, like you're trying to get in and out the house as quickly as possible. But I have a lot to do in the garden that I have been avoiding simply because of the heat and because of the bug pressure. But we do need to get it done if we are going to get our succession sowing done as well as get our fall garden planted. So I wanted to bring you guys along. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. So it is pretty hot out here in the sun y'all. Um, I'm going to make an attempt to start transferring out some of my succession planted melons and I'm doing it and I want to do it today because it actually rained pretty heavily last night which is nice because because I didn't have to take a lot of my time soaking down the bed by watering so it actually has some good rain water going in it I want to start getting some of the melons that are ready to come out planted in and that is what I'm going to be doing for this moment I'm over here looking at like some of these tomato plants and I can't tell if we cut them or if they got oh no they got eaten Ugh. okay there is like the biggest tomato hornworm on this plant and I am not equipped to deal with this I'm just letting y'all know but I have to show y'all this <laughs> this is the stuff that will send me packing this thing is so big it is not even funny and I feel like there has to be more than one because this one over here is just hanging out on this side. But my plant on the other side is, um, it's definitely getting eaten. So it took me a second to spot him as big as he is. And child, oh my God, my poor little heart. I can't take it. <laughs> Do y'all see this? Do you see the size of this monster? That is ridiculous. He has been out here having a feast and a field day. That is insane. I have not seen one that big yet. But I'm gonna let him have these plants. Oh no, get off my leg now. Wow, I can't believe that. I'm gonna let him have those plants for right now because I did plan on taking them down so no need to i guess take him down because he's not affecting me i see another one which looks like an army worm too so they are definitely having a field day on here i don't know if y'all can see the army worm oh i'm trying not to lose it because that thing is just too daggone big for my liking <laughs> Why is he so plump is what I would like to know. Why is he so big? Now I just saw the army worm. Oh, the army worm is on this like leaf right here. So right next to this little cluster of three of uh, tomatoes. Y'all can see. I'll try to like point it out. But he's like right there on that leaf. Oh, these plants got to go. I just can't. But it's that season for us, so. And I'm like, do y'all see this like over here? So you can see how this tree is just kind of like ate off. So I'm pretty sure there's another one somewhere that I'm just not seeing. Ugh. But this is what I'm trying to avoid. Like this right here is all the bugs all the icky ones at that but let me go get these um get this melon plant so i can get them planted and get out their way like i really just can't believe how big this that one thing is oh i have worms that are like out the bed Look at that. i have worms that are out the bed and um oh wait a second now 
And I'm like, I don't know why they're out the bed. I don't know why, like, somebody, if you know why worms do this, like, explain this to me. Because, it's like, sir, you know you need the soil to be alive. And you out of the soil knowing you can't crawl on the ground and get in the sun. And I think that's, like, absolutely wild to me. So they basically end up killing themselves. Like, I get it when it rains too hard. Sometimes they have to get out the actual water. But to me, it's like it just doesn't make any sense. So this melon I'm putting in the ground is a melon that I kept the seeds from, from a store-bought melon. It was like a honey, a golden, no, it's a golden dew melon. That's what it was. And when I saw y'all, that melon was delicious. That melon was delicious. So I was like, let me see if I can actually grow these and hope that it's not like a hybrid or anything like that. So these are actually my mini harvest pumpkins and I'm going to plant one of these like closer to this corner and maybe I'll do like one closer to that corner just so that these are not like right on top of one another. So those were the crimson sweets that I just put in on this side. So I'm only doing two of those for the six. Um, I'm only doing two of those for like my succession sowing. Like I'm trying to keep it to maybe one to two plant of each one. Of course, considering like what the bed can also hold. So um, I got two pumpkins so far. The two market like supermarket melons, the golden dews, two crimson sweets. I still want to do like another sugar baby, um, definitely some more honeydew, which I have those things growing. I'm just waiting for them to get to size. And then um, probably more brilliant melons. And I think I'm going to call it quit for the, oh, I do have yellow petites too. I'm going to call it quits for the melons because we are getting attacked by the pickle worm, y'all. And if you've not ever dealt with the pickle worm, if you thought the vine borer was bad, <laughs> At least the plant can still grow with a vine borer attack. Um, the pickle worm, it bores into your fruits and into the blossoms. So the fruits can't even get pollinated. And once it makes its way inside your fruit, it's inedible. So I do have some plants here. 
that I'm going to be pulling out like the zucchini plant right here. It's under attack. My cucumber plant that I literally just transplanted and that just started producing, it's gotten into those fruits. So that means for me that it is time to start covering my beds back up in preparation for fall. And I will be doing that probably in the next like few weeks or so. But I think at this point I'm going to be done with the cucurbit plants minus these melons and I'm going to have to come up with something to, to protect these until they get to a place where they are large enough because I don't want those um, bugs taking my plants out and they're barely getting started. So that's all I'm doing for right this second. I'll be back out here later to water to spray um, because these bugs are out of hand and also because um, It'll be a little bit cooler for me to get uh, just a few more like maintenance things done for today. And then whatever we don't get done today, we'll be back tomorrow to do this. All right, y'all, it is the next day. And I waited probably way too late to really come out here and do what I wanted to do, but I'm gonna try to get as much as I can done. So I'm planning to sow some snap peas. It's that time for us to show, um, to sow like sugar snap peas for the fall and I want to get those in the ground I'm going to amend this other bed and I wanted to show y'all how I amend my beds so that um, if you are someone that's looking for you know like how to amend a bed to get like maximum growth these are the things that I have done in my garden that have helped me find success with um, getting like really good production the other thing I'm going to attempt to do is start cutting out plants. Now, I have water out here with me. Um, right now it's like 85 degrees, but our real field is 103. I have on all black, I have on long sleeves because um, I just don't want anything touching my arms. <laughs> and if I can get it in, um, I do need to water some things. Now I'm not gonna try to water everything because I just refuse to be out here that long but i want to try to get it as much done as i can in maybe like 20 to 30 minutes so let's go ahead and make this happen oh and i need to transplant my honeydews so i'm gonna do that and yeah wish me luck but um i'm gonna bring y'all along so it is tuesday of this week that i'm showing you guys like my uh garden you know week in my garden and this is what I'm opting to get done. It is about 11.30 right now, which means, you know, it's gonna be at the hottest point in the day. But there are some things I wanna go ahead and try to get out the garden too, because they're just either not producing, they've gotten, you know, infested with bugs, or um, we're just at the point where we're not even pulling from those plants anymore, and they're just taking up space. So let's go ahead, let's get it done. Before I do it, so I'm gonna start with the sugar snap peas. Why? Because it's easy. It's something small. It gives us a small sense of accomplishment and the gusto to keep going. So I'm gonna do that first. So I'm gonna use this like small little space right here. Um, before I take this down, I decided I'm gonna use this like little, um, I don't even know what you call this, this little net trellis to allow the sugar snap peas to grow. Once I'm done growing these, I will actually take this down and get rid of it. And I was I stole my husband's fanny pack so that I could have everything on me that I needed. I do have to grab my gloves though. So I have my seeds in here. That way I could put them back in here when I'm done and keep on moving to the next thing because we need to minimize walking back and forth as much as possible. I think I'm doing these somewhere like four to six inches apart, which is good. They come up, they can reach immediately onto this thing here. I should have brought the um, label with me and I didn't do that.
Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> so I'm putting down about eight of these. I'm hoping that'll be enough. Like, we don't need a ton of sugar snap peas, but that should be good enough to produce a good amount. And I'm like, I can always add more if I feel like I need to. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, since we got the melons transferred over, we got the beans planted, I'm gonna amend this bed, and um, I'll see how I feel, like after I get most of these things watered, but I will attempt to put down some of the seeds that I wanna put down, because we're kinda at that point of being able to succession sow, but kinda just being on the cusp of too late. So I want to go ahead and get like the rest of my winter squash planted and you know reseeded so we can do some succession sowing for those. All right, y'all, so I'm using two bags of black cow for this particular bed. If I had my way, I would have bought three, but um, I didn't, so I'm gonna use what I have and then obviously add in my regular like um, balance fertilizer, the bone meal and the blood meal. But I'm using two of these because winter squash, they're heavy feeders. And then I'm gonna top it with two bags of soil and rake everything over together. Alright y'all, so the camera keeps cutting off, um, it is like I'm fighting the sun, I'm sweating, the sweat is dripping in my eyes, but I basically took my um, garden rake or you know like lawn rake and combined, like make sure that was mixed together well, the soil and the black cow mix. I'm not going to do it right now, I'm going to go inside, take a cool down period because um, it's hot, my nose is running, sweat is dripping into my eyeballs. <laughs> You know, we just take the signs as they are to take a break when needed, when it's hot like this. So I'm gonna leave this for now, but at least we got that part done because seeding is easy. So when I come back out here a little bit later, I'll go ahead and take care of planting the seeds. But I think we got quite a bit done in that half hour. It probably doesn't seem like it, but I seeded snow peas. I got transplants in the ground. We amended this bed. And then when I'm ready to put the seeds in, I'll add in the other stuff like the um, fertilizers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'll add in the other stuff like the um, bone meal, blood meal, and the fertilizer, and then we'll get everything watered in. But I think that's all I'm gonna try to accomplish for today outside of just giving some water to these three bags really quickly 
because even though it's been raining the last few days, I want to make sure these plants are off to a good start. So these are my tomatillos and my, um, I think it's a mini pumpkin, I'm not sure. But let's go ahead and water those and then we'll be back out here later. Hey friends, it's Thursday. Um, so today, I'm not gonna be out here very long even though this is like the perfect day <laughs> to be outside. This is probably the coolest day that we have had in, I don't know, the last two months. So it's about, I wanna say maybe it's about like 79 degrees or something. And it's nice, it's sunny, but it's just not too hot. So I'm gonna take, <laughs> I'm gonna take advantage of getting some seeds in the ground. I'm gonna do some watering. And then I want to start pulling out some of these plants that should have been pulled out a little bit a little while ago. I don't know how much of that I'll get done like during this window, but let's get these seeds in the ground because I only have a little bit of time left in the planting window for like the winter squash succession sowing. Um, I'm gonna check on the watermelons and um, my other melons and then I will water I probably won't take you guys on the watering on the watering part of it but I do need to fertilize some of my plants and um, probably do some staking too so I definitely will try to get that done in this video well at least today but um let's go ahead and plant these seeds so we can get our next batch of stuff going what is that Oh, whoa. Watch yourself now. And hopefully I don't have any more hornworms out here. Since I sprayed the last time, I haven't really seen anything hanging around. Now, I will share what I used. I'm just looking around, y'all. But um, I ended up using permethrin. And that is kind of like a synthetic version of permethrin. The reason I chose to use that was because I needed something that acted immediately, but the difference between that and the permethrin is the permethrin actually leaves like a coating on the plants that lasts and acts up to like four weeks, whereas the permethrin will wash away with the rain. So it did do the job. It's not something I would use often, but it is something I would use at least once a month during these summer months because when I say these leaf-footed bugs were just way too much for my liking, um, they had to go. That was probably the biggest bug outside of the army worm that I had issues with this spring and summer season. So let me set y'all up um, to look at the bed. But basically, I'm going to be doing my succession sowing of winter squash here again. The only time, the only difference this time is it will have uh, plenty of room to grow on its own. It won't be sharing a bed with the corn. And hopefully it does a lot better than it did the first time around. So that was my blue Guatemalan. I'm only gonna do one more of the acorn squash, so I hope these um, seeds actually come up. And the thing I'm gonna be doing slightly differently this go around is if anything wants to sprawl on the floor, it can go right ahead and do it as opposed to me trying to get everything on the trellis. So I went ahead and just put the seeds down. I'm gonna go get my other gloves so I can like push them in and then I'll come back and water them in. Um, whew, Lord, I'm ready to cut these tomato plants down, y'all. <laughs> it's like this, I mean, I wouldn't say that there's nothing wrong with them, but they are still producing in some aspects, but 
I'm just kind of overlooking it, like all the diseases and everything. But um, let me go get my gloves so I can push these seeds in and get them watered in and I can move on to the next thing. So I also like how the um, sunflower is kind of like edging the bed. I think I might drop some more sunflower seeds to y'all because um, I'll have the room. I'm not putting say, anything on the outskirts of this one, but I like the way that looks. So if they come up around like the edges of the um, bed, I think that'll be pretty nice. time for me to cut this grass or on the side of this bed again this grass grows so quickly because of the watering and everything but um and it makes me not want to step in it but i'm gonna go ahead and plant these are more bush beans i'm gonna basically do like most of this bed so that i can basically make this like hopefully the last one if i get enough um for the bush beans succession and then i'm actually gonna plant some of the kentucky wonder pole beans again so those should keep producing once i plant them until my uh first frost but these i can have out in 60 days and have the bed um or maybe even so you know i don't know two two and a half months and have the bed back and hopefully i will have had enough I don't know why to me it sounds like this bird is going uh-uh <laughs> like, but i think like, the other thing i do need to do when i move the tomatoes is move this marigold plant because technically like beans and marigolds shouldn't be oh crap planted together <laughs> i definitely do one in the grass i'm getting a little out of hand now ain't you Oh no wonder the daggone bag is broke at the bottom. I'm like, where do these beans keep flying out from? I'm gonna have to fix that. Oh wow. Beans, y'all doing me dirty. Oh. Oh. And I actually watered the bed for these before I decided to go ahead and um plant them but I will water over them one time. <sighs> All right, y'all. So now that I got that done, I'm going to, I think I'm going to take a break. I have been watering. I still have quite a bit of watering to do, but I am a little hot and I don't want to like overheat and be sweaty, you know, and then have to, do my whole morning routine over again but um i'm gonna take a quick break and then i'll come back and maybe i'll start like chopping down some plants or if not i'll find something else to do because there's plenty to be done it is windy out here so it's friday y'all um i'm out here i'm not doing a ton but this is a weed inside the blueberry plant but I wanted to go ahead and like fertilize these because they do need it. I think it's like long overdue. Um, just checking on the plants. You can see like, I don't know if y'all can see that. The weeds have taken over where this borge was and my dianthus is. It looks crazy in there. It looks like we have a new flush of strawberries coming up also, which is pretty nice. I've been neglecting the strawberries because it has just been way too hot. And <laughs> the fruit plants are suffering as a result. is wild. 
ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? Like, who gave you a home here? <laughs> added granular fertilizer to these in a while so that's all I'm doing today I'll probably go ahead and fertilize them with some liquid fertilizer soon as well I'll probably at least for the blueberry trees um actually for the blueberries and the raspberries I probably could stand to add a little bit of soil acidifier to the raspberries and definitely top this off with some but I was out here, um, I came out here, I decided to come out here. Now, it's been gray all day, and the minute I come out here, <laughs> it decides that it wants, the sun wants to come out and it's hot. It's been gray and cool all day. So my raspberry plants look pretty bad. They need to be staked up. I can't find my Velcro at the moment. So <laughs> I do need to stake them, but I don't have anything to stake them with. All right, be careful. Got plants coming up in here. Um, anyway. I really can't rake this in too much because I have actual like stems that are coming up from the raspberry plant. But I do need to come back through here and I know y'all see all this blight. Um, I need to pull these off. I think that obviously is a result of the humidity but more so because the plants were a little bit closer together and as they got bigger they were getting like intertwined and stuff. So I did spread them out a little bit, which is why I need to stake them because spreading them out without staking them is not really doing much of anything. They're still growing into one another. Plus it's affecting my ability to get fruit. But I have to find my Velcro before I do that. And I really don't know where it's at at the moment. But fertilize these. I will come back and water them in with some water soluble fertilizer. And um, at some point, I don't know if it's going to be this week even or in this vlog, but I am going to come back and trim off all of these um, disease leaves so that we can give this plant a chance to actually be healthy and produce some fruit for me. So I decided to end this week here, you guys. We did get a lot more stuff done. 
we ended up pulling up some of the bags, moving them out the way so that we could prepare the inside of the garden to lay down additional landscape fabric. We also did end up pulling some more of the plants that needed to come out. The weather heated back up and it was really a get in, get out kind of situation for us. And I took the help where I could get it. So I just wanted to get things done during that time frame. I hope you guys enjoyed spending the week in my garden and seeing what it actually looks like when it's not too hot to get stuff done. I appreciate you guys for joining me. As always, let's keep learning, sewing, and growing together, friends. Until our next garden update, bye.